What ultrasonic flow meter do you use for your data logging applications? Coming up next, a review of the Fuji PortaFlow C's data logger on Tech Review. Welcome to another edition of Instruments Direct Tech Review. Today, we're going to review the Fuji PortaFlow C's data logging features. Let me first say my previous experiences with data loggers have been a royal pain in the you know what. Limited number of data points, difficult with communications, serial, IR adapters, cables, even Windows issues, software issues, lost data. It can actually drive you crazy. Well, I'm better now. I'm down. Data loggers were so difficult to work with, people just didn't use them with flow meters before. But all that changed when Fuji came out with the PortaFlow C FSC series portable ultrasonic flow meter. Let's look at the flow meter logger specifications. As you can see on the screen here, the data logger is on board to the Fuji PortaFlow C. It's not plugged in, it's part of the circuit design there and it will collect up to 25 million data points. So you can store data now until the cows come home. Literally, this is a tremendous amount of information that will be more than enough for any project. You could probably store data for nine months there. Well, it stores the data log uh, and it stores the recording screen, like a screenshot. It's adjustable sample rate. I think it goes as fast as 10 seconds and of course up. And the neat part, it stores all the data and an SD card. Uh, file format as a CSV file format. And if you want, there is a USB port. Why anybody use that, I don't really know. The SD card is located right under here, under a rubber plug. And under here, you can see the SD card, which pops right out. And right next to that is a USB port. Why anybody would use the USB part when you could just use this SD card, it's beyond me. Now, if you want to do any data collection, you have two choices. You can do a quick log, which is basically just a screenshot or a regular data log for an extended period of time. But before you get started, you might want to double check your flow meters clock. It's important that it syncs with the real time. This will be displayed on the top of your screen. If you need to change it, go to the system setup, basic setup, and make any changes you need. Here we have the short-term log. If you plan on logging for no more than an hour, or you're up on a ladder or something that you need a quick snapshot here, you can use the quick log features. You simply highlight the log icon, which is in the upper right hand of the measurement screen, and hit enter. The color will change indicating the logging is taking process. So this method is preset. The sample rate is about every 10 seconds for one hour. So if you don't do that, then we need to look at a conventional log. And to set up for the conventional log that exceeds an hour, which is most of the logs you're probably doing, could be an hour, week, month, whatever you want, you need to set up the log, and so now we need to go into the data logger menu, and we select logging. Once logging is selected, then we need to input the desired name, and again, it's got 25 million data points there, so you don't have to take the data out every day, so it's important that you select a name that you can identify time, place, date, and so on with your particular application. And if a lot of the same application, the same site, you may have to go very granular as far as your name goes so you can identify it later at a quick reference there. The next step involves you have to activate the measurements that you would actually like to log. So we have menu one, two, and two, two contain all these different units there. For a traditional log, you're just gonna look at menus on the first page. When you get into the energy applications, there's data that you can select for the second, uh, the thermal energy side of the coin there. And again, doesn't make any difference because we have 25 million data points. So you have all the space you want as far as the intelligent information that you want. 
From the mode menu, hit the right to move on to the continuous tab and press enter. And from here, we can set the start and stop time of our log, as well as the log sample rate. So in cases here, most people tend to use sample rates of once a minute. Uh, the minimum log is 10 second intervals there. Uh, if you do once a minute, you've got 1,440 data points in a day. So it's a lot of data there. Uh, so it depends on your particular application there. So if you don't know, start off with once a minute. And here again, here's another point. If the clock is wrong, then it can make a difference in syncing with other data there or can affect your start time there. So another good reason to make sure your clock is synced on the flow meter there. So once you finish this programming, you hit start to set the log in queue, and it will begin at that appointed time. So once the log is finished, you can verify your log uh, files via the data log menu, and the log files stored on the SD card is located in the bottom of the flow meter, as I showed you earlier there. And just think of it as like a C drive in your computer. You're basically reading the drive information there. And as you can see in the diagram there, the quick logs will have a quick function there, and then you'll have much more uh, alphanumeric information you can put for a longer log. So in this case there, we just open up the bottom of the meter, we take out the log, and uh, take out the card rather, and we can put that into your PC. If you don't have an SD port, uh, we provide it with a, a USB reader, but you can pick up a USB reader for just a couple bucks there at any office store. Uh, so it's a simple choice there. There's no computer that won't accept it there because you all have USB ports there. Once you put it in there, you turn on Excel and you open the file. No software is required, no cables required. As long as you know how to turn on Excel, you have your data. Now that's all there's to it. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to use. But if you're still not quite sure, you can do a practice log. You don't need to be hooked up to Flow to test the logger. Just set it up on your desktop there for a five minute practice log. And if anything, it'll build your confidence because there is nothing worse than setting up for a logging project for a week or a month for a long flow survey there and ending up with no data at the end of your test due to a, a programming mistake. So, for most of you, your application of logging is done, unless you want to monitor energy BTU applications. For that case there, we will need to move forward here and go through a setup process for the energy parameters. So, if you have a BTU energy application, the setup is slightly different. We're still monitoring flow with the flow meter, and we've added temperature measurement, non-contact temperature measurement. So the flow transducer is on the supply line measuring flow. Uh, one strap on RTDs on the supply line measure temperature one for the supply. The other temperature sensor is strapped on the return line. And the key here is to monitor flow and temperature differential. And all this meter, all this information will go to your data logger. And in order to do that, we need to set up the flow meter for the data logging process. So in order to do that, we take our temperature sensor, as we indicated before, uh, strap on the RTDs using a tape and the uh, thermal compound, assemble that to the outside of the pipe, and then we run our communication cable back to the, uh, the Fuji port of flow C. Uh, and then after we do that, it'll go directly to the flow meter. Now, important installation point when you install RTDs, we are looking for temperature differential. So step one, you're gonna have a differential just because the sensor's on the outside versus the inside. Using strap on temperature monitoring does not specifically mean that you need to have the exact temperature. Your goal is temperature differential. So once you have temperature differential, you've got what you want there. So the transducers, temperature transducers, have to be installed in a like position. So install both at 3 o'clock on the side as opposed to one at the top, one at the bottom, because you could have a different temperature in the bottom versus the top of the pipe. So strap on your temperature sensors uh, for optimum performance uh, on the 
the same location there. So before setting up for the energy functions, we need to select the temperature units. So this option can be found under the site startup menu. And then you need to select the units of output, the bottom two options provided with your units and total settings. You begin by going to the system setup menu, then the analog input. Remember that later on, analog input. So you can put any analog signal in here. You can measure pressure, temperature, whatever is giving you a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So file that away. Uh, the input output options are toggled from not used to use, and this will engage the meter for your temperature input. Now, once the analog input has been initialized, you can go to the advanced uh, settings here. Uh, so input channel one will be the supply. Now we're defining it, so you're going to have a pretty data log. And now advanced input channel two to set for the return. You go to the range input and you change the input range in both channels to the following. In this case there, we've set up the base scale for 32 degrees and full scale 212. So we got freezing and boiling as our default setup there. If you had other sensors, you could do everything else. But that's the other neat thing about this meter. The temperature sensors, once we scale them, it's plug and play. There's no field calibration for this particular application. And then the final step, of course, involves activating the measurements you want to display on your data log. So you can utilize the same setup process we did in the beginning of our conversation here. And remember we said page two there, now you need to select your energy temperature uh, information to be included with your data log. In summary, if you need to do any data logging with an ultrasonic flow meter, the Fuji Portaflow C gets very high marks from me. In fact, the logger is so easy to use, you might actually use it as a standalone logger. We'd like to thank you for watching our program, and for more information on today's subject, check out our show notes and links listed below. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. As always, we would appreciate any suggestions of technology that we should include in our tech review program. This has been Brent Baird for Instruments Direct. See you next time.